Assalamu alaikum and welcome to all. Today we will be examining the cardiovascular system, which is one of the most important examinations. It consists of four parts, including the examination of the pulses, the jugular venous pressure, precordium, and the blood pressure. We will begin with the usual greetings, introduction, consent, exposure, and proper positioning of the patient. The carotid arteries are located between the larynx and medial to the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle where they can easily be palpated. Gently place your thumb or the tips of your fingers to assess the character and volume of the pulsations, one side at a time. You can also auscultate for a carotid bruit using the diaphragm of your stethoscope. To assess the pulsations of the brachial artery, you need to flex the patient's elbow to reveal the tendon of the biceps brachii muscle. Use your thumb or index and middle fingers to palpate the brachial artery just medial to this tendon. Make sure to check both sides for the character and volume of the pulsations. The brachial artery is also the preferred site for taking an indirect measurement of the blood pressure. With the patient's right hand semi-flexed and semi-pronated, gently palpate the tendon of the flexor carpi radialis muscle. Place the tips of your middle three fingers just lateral to this tendon and feel the pulsations of the radial artery. Keep an eye on your watch. Assess the rate and rhythm for about 15 seconds and multiply by 4 if regular. If the pulse is irregular, check for a good 1 minute. A two-finger method is also acceptable. Follow the same process for the patient's left radial pulse using the tips of either two or three fingers. Assess the rate and rhythm of the arterial pulsations. But this time, also make sure to check the radio-radial symmetry like this. A delay between the bilateral radial pulses suggests and narrowing of the aorta proximal to the left subclavian artery. While assessing the radial pulsations, we can also check for a collapsing pulse by placing the base of the fingers over the radial pulse and asking the patient regarding any arm or shoulder restrictions. If none, raise the patient's arm vertically above their head and assess for a sudden collapse in the pulse wave form. The femoral artery is palpated at the mid-inguinal point located halfway between the anterior superior allex spine and the pubic symphysis. Using the pads of your index and middle fingers, assess the pulsations for their volume. Make sure to check for a radiofemoral delay as seen in a coarctation of the aorta. Assess both sides using the same method. This method is particularly helpful in locating the femoral artery in obese patients. With the patient recumbent and the knees flexed at 30 degrees, wrap your hands around the knee or alternatively place your thumbs on the tibial tuberosity. Deeply palpate and assess the popliteal artery against the back of the tibia like this. This artery is particularly hard to feel, so make sure not to hurt the patient. First of all, locate the tendon of the extensor hallucis longus by asking the patient to dorsiflex the great toe. Lateral to this prominent tendon is the first web space. Using the pads of your index and middle fingers, feel the pulsations of the arterior dorsalis pedis in this triangular space. Now, 
Repeat the same process for the opposite side. Diminished or absent pulses are an important sign of peripheral arterial disease. With the patient semi-recumbent at 45 degrees and the head turned slightly to the left, locate the jugular venous pulsations from the right side between the two heads of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Avoid excessive head turning or elevation of the chin. If jugular pulsations are visualized, use the abdominal jugular reflux to confirm its presence by sustaining a deep palpation over the liver for about 10 seconds. Like this. With the patient supine or semi-recumbent, inspect the chest for any apical pulsations, scar marks, chest deformity, etc. Following a general inspection of the patient's chest as described previously, begin palpation by placing the palmar surface of your right hand over the precordium and feel for a cardiac impulse. Locate the apex feet and note its position. Ask the patient to turn left if you are unable to do so. Counting from the sternal angle of Lewis at the second intercostal space, locate the apex feet in the left fifth intercostal space just medial to the mid clavicular line and make sure to note its character. Measure the distance of the apex beat which is roughly 9 to 10 centimeters in normal individuals from the mid sternal line to the left fifth intercostal space. Now place the ulnar border or the heel of your hand in the left parasternal area to feel for a right ventricular heave with the patient breath holding in expiration. Also make sure to check for an epigastric impulse like this. With the palmar surface of the fingers of your right hand and with the opposite hand on the carotids, palpate for thrills in the apical tricuspid in the lower left parasternal area, followed by the pulmonary and sequentially the aortic area. Percussion is not an essential component of a precordial examination. However, it can play a role in suspected cardiomegaly due to cardiac tamponade or pericardial effusion to assess cardiac size. Begin by percussing diagonally from the right aspect of the chest till you reach a point of dullness over the precordium. Repeat the same process from the remaining three directions. Please note that it is advisable to mark these points of dullness to make a rough estimate of the cardiac size. Begin by listening intently using the diaphragm of your stethoscope at the apical zone for the first and second heart sounds distinguished by placing one hand on the carotid pulsation. Move on to auscultate the tricuspid area along the lower left sternal border, followed by the pulmonary and the aortic area sequentially. Repeat the same with the bell of the stethoscope at the apical and the tricuspid areas only. The examiner is using a master cardiology stethoscope and applying light skin contact for the bell mode. 